Oi, anisotropy, anisotropy, tropy, I don't know, is inherent to self-attention in transformers. All right, kind of a cool paper here today on interpretability. So transformers suffer from a phenomenon known as the representation degeneration problem. Specifically, this degeneration is characterized by anisotropy, a property of hidden representations that makes them all close to each other in terms of angular distance, cosine similarity, right? Uh, literature currently, in the way you can imagine this in three dimensions is um, we have all of our vectors, like like a, imagine a sphere, right? We have all of our lines that point to a certain part on the surface of the sphere from the center. Um, uh, I, the, it might be ideal to have all of your lines, all of your embedding vectors points to different parts of the sphere that are kind of evenly placed around. Um, but what we see in transformers, the, 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 well, that might be ideal. What we see in transformers is that they all tend to point towards the same kind of rough area. They tend to not use most of the sphere, most of the actual potential angular area, basically. Uh, literature currently suggests that it may be a consequence of optimizing the cross entropy loss on long tail distributions of tokens. However, it remains uncertain whether anisotropy is a fundamental property of transformers based models or a consequence of the pre training process. Uh, Gao et al. shows that the degeneration of representations comes from the distributions of subwords in natural language, namely the existence of unused and rare tokens that tend to push all representations away from the origin towards a specific direction. Anisotropy in LLMs uh, could be explained by a global drift of the representations in the same direction. Uh, the authors propose that this drift is caused by the persistent updating of the representation of rare and unused tokens in a consistent direction due to the nature of the softmax operation in the cross entropy loss. They show that removing the average component to all representations leads to near perfect isotropy. Um, so that just means uh, effectively using layer norm excessively, not just in minimal places, but just constantly, um, you will end up with actual isotropy, uh, meaning even spacing around of your angular distance vectors, right? Uh, several methods have been proposed to reduce anisotropy in transformers. Uh, they usually consist in post-processing representations and lead to downstream performance boosts. Uh, we argue that, oh, I want to clarify with the um, removing the average component. Um, when you remove that average, that mean, uh, like for example, RMS norm does not do this. RMS norm allows you to keep that component and RMS norm actually works better than layer norm, right? We've we switched to RMS norm since like 2020 or so, right? Um, the uh, interesting, this idea here of like, okay, if we remove that mean, that average component, like the, the general direction of these vectors, then suddenly the vectors all find it much easier to be isotropic, right? It's almost like I'm imagining, based off my prior knowledge of residual learning and um, how that moves uh, classifications into a given direction over the course of each layer iteratively, um, that we would almost imagine like, oh, because of this mean average component sticking off into, let's say, the first quadrant direction, right? Um, because they, they're all having these averages that, um, that move them all out that direction, it doesn't make sense for a, uh, a given angular distance on top of that average components to point backwards or to point sideways like they all point in roughly the same direction they keep moving out into the same space maybe not quite sure on that uh not sure that made sense either uh, they usually consist in post-processing representations and lead to downstream performance boosts we argue that these positive results are paving the way for the search of pre-training objectives that do not introduce anisotropy in the first place in the hope that the resulting models will also perform better without any post-processing and potentially be trained more efficiently to assert whether the cross entropy objective applied on vocabularies containing rare tokens is the sole cause of the common drift issue we explore anisotropy in character-based models. And character-based model, by definition, like there is no rare token, no rare character. I mean, relatively, I'm sure like X and Y and Q are more rare than S and E kind of thing. But overall, by rare, rare, they mean seriously rare. If uh, anisotropy was only caused by the presence of unused or rare subwords, those character level models should be much less prone to this issue. In fact, as shown in figure two, Where's figure two? Figure two, right here. 
these uh, those models all display significant levels of anisotropy in at least one of their layers. Interestingly, the models that are based solely on characters or bytes for input and prediction seem to display even higher levels of anisotropy. So it's actually definitely not due to the um, rare token issue, given that we actually have byte level and token level or and, um, character level models that still exhibit anisotropy at certain layers. Um, so we can see here this uh, y-axis is cosine similarity. Um, you would expect isotropy, you'd have average to be zero, right? But only character births and I mean this K9S are like somewhat close to zero. Um, everything really does exhibit some level of away from zero. Even even a character BERT is um, at layer five uh, greater than 0.2 average cosine similarity. Some of these models are much, much higher, even getting close to like, oh, that one's almost at one, that's crazy. Bytes 5 base is at the last layer really close to 1. Um, the cosine similarity, that's actually insane how close it is. Uh, it may be argued that anisotropy is related to linguistic properties, thus we proceed to explore the anisotropy problem for transformer-based models in other modalities, specifically speech and vision. Uh, once again, almost every model shows a significant level of anisotropy in some of its layers. Uh, I'm guessing this is this figure maybe. Yeah, this is vision models. Um, looks like it actually does go down throughout the model, but it starts off higher. So the actual embeddings, um, the token embeddings, are relatively high, at least for most of these models. But this is much less so, it seems. The language models had much more anisotropy than at least this graph of vision models, it seems like. Uh, related work showed that anisotropy in subword level language models is caused by a drift of the hidden representations in a shared direction, that's what I was talking about earlier. Uh, in this section, we try to extend this observation to other modalities. We study the correlation between the uniformly measured cosine similarity and the norm of the average hidden representation for each layer. If anisotropy could be directly explained by the drift effect, we would expect a monotonic relation between uh, the uh, norm and the average cosine similarity. Uh, the anisotropy of subword-based models can generally be correlated with the drift effect, except for GPT-2. So it, it is true that that was the thing we were just talking about was happening, except GPT-2. Interestingly, we noticed that the anisotropy affecting most CNN-based vision models is generally not correlated with the drift effect, contrary to transformers-based models uh, in the same modality. Oh, so that graph earlier was, I didn't notice that. Um, yeah, this is a convolution-based vision model, not a transformer, so this makes a lot more sense um, if we're thinking about is it maybe transformers that are doing this specifically, is the attention mechanism. Uh, we analyze experimentally the behavior of the untrained transformer block uh, when a common bias term is added to untrained, to untrained input representations. This allows us to mimic the common drift as mentioned in the previous work and to identify some proper properties induced by this artificial drift on the output me um, representations. Specifically, we study the average norm of the input representations against the average norm of the output representations. We also retrieve the self-attention scores before the softmax operation. Why did I highlight this graph right here? Um, P-value of the correlation test between norm of the average representation and the cosine similarity averaged over all layers. Um, for models above the red dotted line, there is no significant um, correlation between drift effect and anisotropy level. I guess pause there if you're curious as to which models are doing it kind of thing. They have a bunch of stuff in here. Vision Transformers, GPT-2, uh, a bunch of things. Why are these bottom ones not labeled? Huh, weird. I'm not sure I get that or why I highlighted it, but whatever. Uh, in figure 6a, where's 6a? Down here, 6a, okay. In figure 6a, we observe that the output representations have an average cosine similarity value that is slightly higher than the one of the input representations, no matter the level of input bias. Um, so we see input blue line, output orange line representations, um, the bias norm on the bottom, average cosine similarity on the top, so it seems like output has more anisotropy than the, or not more anisotropy, but um, a larger correlation has more cosine similarity per bias norm, I guess, uh, than the inputs. 
Uh, we also notice that while the norm of the average output representation increases with the bias norm, it seems to meet the corresponding input measure for a given bias norm. I think with this, they were adding an artificial bias term in there. I'm not sure if this is an actual normal model behavior, but just a test relationship. Interestingly, this shows that there is a fixed point in terms of the norm in the transformers function with biased input. So here, um, if we do bias norm, average norm is this bottom one, right? We find that the output representations, they kind of, they, they level out. They really don't want to go past um, a, a certain level of norm, whereas the inputs, you can keep raising the norm with your bias term experimentally, um, and no matter, like, and it'll just level out in terms of the output. It won't keep going up, which is interesting. I'm not sure how to interpret it, but it's interesting. Moreover, this fixed point level n star is in the order of magnitude of the average hidden state norms of the layers of the trained BERT model. This hints that the model's representations stabilize when their norm is close to this fixed point. Here is histograms of the pre-softmax attention scores as the input bias norm increases, right? So blue is low input bias norm, yellow is high. Again, we're just artificially meshing with this bias term and raising it to see what happens. Um, the attention scores uh, get more widely distributed and more negative, it seems like, as the bias um, goes up, as the actual average value of a given vector um, goes up, which is interesting. So it's almost like the ones that are have a lower um, bias, have a lower magnitude, are paid more attention to, maybe? I'm not sure. This paper, I'm not gonna lie, not fully sure what's happening here, a lot of this stuff, but whatever. Uh, in figure nine, we retrieve softmax values in the self-attention block, and for each position, we extract the maximum, the median, and the minimum. Uh, we then average these values over the whole batch and repeat for various input bias norm levels. We notice that as the input bias norm increases, the self-attention softmax distributions tend to become less entropic, um, evolving towards higher maximum probabilities and lower minimal probabilities. Um, so that's how this was happening here, meaning when we get towards this yellow area, um, less entropic as in like a sharper distribution of the attention becomes more sure of a certain item. Um, oh, oh, okay, I see. Whereas um, with no bias norm inputs, a lot more entropic, a lot more even probabilities. That makes more sense, that interpretation. But we notice that as the input bias norm increases, self-attention softmax distribution tends to become less entropic, or that sense already. Uh, in the following analysis, we'll use the term sharpness to discuss entropy levels of the self-attention distributions. Okay, what's this figure nine say? Evolution of the self-attention softmax values as the input bias norm increases. Okay, so bias norm as it gets larger and larger. Remember, as it gets larger, we get um, more, or sorry, less entropic. <coughs> attention values, right? And so what do we have here? Max, median, min. So as the bias norm increases, our minimum attention soft max probability values um, go even further down. Our averages go slightly down as well, hence the um, less entropy. And then our maximum attention uh, values go up. So it focuses more on paying attention to specific tokens, I guess. However, at low anisotropy levels, i.e. when the bias norm is low, we see that the effect is not very important. Another, hence like what we're talking about here, this first part is like it's relatively flat in the beginning, right? Another explanation could be that training favors sharp self-attention patterns, which in turn induces a drift in the model's representations. Uh, in this section, we study the evolution of these query key representations along training. I've been thinking about this a while, for a while, actually. Um, so training favors sharp self-attention patterns. Training, whenever we're training, we are encouraging the model to, like, give in some prefix to only predict the actual next token of the text. Whereas, like, in reality, there's probably a good number of tokens that'd be perfectly reasonable to predict as that next token. I've been wondering for a while about, like, wouldn't it be cool to have um, a model trained where instead of uh, one hot vectors inside your CE loss, is there a way to be like, all right, these four tokens are all equally 
plausible, realistic, and let's train on all these four tokens and have it kind of branch out. It would start off probably like, um, it'd be a very weird batch setup, I guess, where instead of having like um, different sequences in a batch, you'd have one sequence that branches kind of thing. So kind of like a um, choose your own adventure book, we would need bodies of text that like branch out every single um, word, there's different options given for the next word. And we basically like, we train the thing on just every reasonable option from the next, like from this word um, to branch off that next sentence. I wonder if you could create a synthetic data set with GPT-4 or something of a high enough quality um, by just literally grabbing its values and doing like a, like a teacher student thing where we um not directly teacher student because you don't actually like read off the logic as training. But um, it'd be super cool if we had like your given batch um, in your given batch um, across all the sequences. The first token is the exact same. Uh, the second token has maybe a couple different options and then like branches off from there. I'd love to see like in like to we get like all possible or at least a large number of possible different uh, texts that could stem from uh, this uh, initial starting token. Um, I think more realistically given how crazy big the batch size would get in that scenario what you'd have to do is say we're not going to do this branching for every single token we'll do it every x number of tokens or something um uh and maybe even randomly throughout and hope that that averages out to training correctly to what we want to do for it um but i'd be very curious to see how that, how that works out the problem is i think the data set is getting a good data set for that because you could just have humans annotate it which would take forever it definitely does not exist naturally um but i'd be very curious to see how that goes maybe like create a website where people can like continue stories from where you left off kind of thing um and they continue those stories at like a given word where it left off i don't know uh in this section we study the evolution of these query and key representations along training okay uh, figure 13 shows that the first layers display a common direction dynamic as the cosine similarity tends to increase, thus showing that the key and query distributions drift along a similar direction in average. Okay, query key. I think it's this one, right? Oh, wait, no, figure 13. Too many graphs, too many graphs. The last layers seem to adopt an opposite direction dynamic as the cosine similarity between their mean, key, and query representations gets negative along training. This drift induces an increase in the magnitude of scalar products obtained in the self-attention um, query key transpose operation, thus facilitating the emergence of sharp patterns where attention focuses on specific tokens. Uh, cool, I guess. So, I don't know how to interpret these. Who knows? Uh, in this work, we argue that the nature of data distributions is not solely responsible for the anisotropy observed in most hidden representations of transformers. Untrained transformers layers display a tendency towards anisotropy. Based uh, biased inputs tend to increase the variance of the attention scores and thus facilitate the emergence of sharp patterns in the self-attention mechanisms. Uh, along training, query, and key distributions uh, drift in parallel directions which increases anisotropy in the inner representations of the transformer layers, while allowing sharper attention patterns. Um, cool. Uh, even though anisotropy has not been shown to be an issue in language modeling, previous works have advocated that removing anisotropy in output representations leads to better sense disambiguation abilities. Again, maybe, maybe it's harmful. We argue that anisotropy in the transformer architecture may actually help models by allowing sharp attention patterns. That's interesting, because the, the way I've been thinking about my current project, my next concept prediction, is like, at first I thought maybe um, isotropy would be helpful, but I think it's only helpful in me visualizing it. I think at the end of the day, the thing I have going on works just as well with anisotropy happening it's just compressed into a smaller space but like who cares the surface area is so large anyways it doesn't really matter um so i don't know can't say i fully got this paper at all but it was kind of interesting i guess uh like subscribe comment youtube things join the uh, discord to discuss and support me on patreon if you would like to uh yeah end of video